Okay, let's take a look at the code that we've been working on. We've got a class symbol, a class rule, a class grammar, some functions, some methods that we want to implement, and then a main at the end. Okay, We're going to make one change before we get started, uh, and that is uh, to incorporate aspects of the vocabulary concept that we have implemented elsewhere into, into class symbol. Okay. In a previous assignment, we created a class called Vocabulary that was used to uh, look things up so that we would only have one instance of each type of object, uh, of each symbol, uh, for example. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and do that. Uh, we'll start off with a Vocabulary class explicitly, and then we're going to move that into the symbol class itself. Okay or at least we'll consider doing that. All right, so let's create a vocabulary object. Okay, and the vocabulary object is going to con contain a dictionary that maps from uh, something provided by the user, usually this would be a string, uh, to an instance of the symbol class. Okay, so we'll have self.symbols equals, and then we want a new dictionary, okay? <clears throat> All right, so we can do this, we can do this. So it's going to be an initially empty dictionary, and we're going to have a get method that takes a value and tests if value is a key in self.symbols, then return self.symbols value, okay? So if value is a key in self.symbols, then we're going to return the associated value here, okay? So if we want to make this a little more explicit, we could say key to avoid confusion, okay? So key is going to be a string. Uh, and if that key is in the dictionary, if we've already stored it already, then we will return the value associated with that key. Otherwise, if the key is not in the dictionary, in self.symbols, then we will add it and then return the value. Okay, so value equals a new symbol with that key and then we will put that in the dictionary self.symbols key equals value and then we will return the value. Okay, that's all we need for this dictionary. Okay, uh, in Previous vocabularies, we also had an integer representation here. Instead of an integer representation, we're just going to have a symbol representation. Okay. All right. And now, in uh, we could change uh, change our existing code so that instead of constructing symbols directly, we'll first construct a vocabulary object, and then we will ask that vocabulary object for symbols. Okay. So let's find places in our code where we construct a symbol, okay, and there we are. So uh, in this case we would need the vocabulary object uh, to be provided as well. Okay, and then we would change this to vocab dot get symbol and let's rename this from get to get symbol okay so now this code will say I've got a vocabulary object that I've already constructed somehow uh, we'll get to that in a moment and the vocab object is capable of taking a string and converting it to a symbol creating that symbol if it's not already created 
Okay, and then we'll do the same thing down here. So we'll get the symbol associated with that string, and similarly here. Okay, all right, and that means that down here, when we read the rule, we will need to provide a vocab object. Okay, so we can do that here, vocab equals vocab. Okay, we'll create a new vocabulary. And then we will provide that vocab to get line, or rather read line, we'll provide that vocab. Okay. And now let's try running the code again. We have to provide a file name as an argument. We provide the sample, the sample grammar, and there the code works as we expected it to. Okay, uh, we're we've got all of the non-terminals, and we've got all of the rules. Uh, we need to figure out why it's printing out the extra non-terminals. So let's find all of the prints. Okay. This was some debugging code that we had in before, so we'll get rid of that. And there we are. Okay, so that gets the vocabulary, gets us a vocabulary class. Okay, and we wouldn't have to have this. It's okay to just construct symbols. There are some good reasons uh, that we'll encounter in a little bit why it's nice to have only one instance of each symbol. That's going to have to do with uh, putting the symbols in a as the keys in a dictionary or as uh, items in a set. And when we do that, uh, there's going to be some things that have to happen. The set needs to check to see is this item already in the in the in the set if we want to add a new item. Uh, and to do that, one way that we can uh, approach this is by allowing Python to make some default assumptions for us and one of those assumptions is that it can test for object equality uh, and if we use this vocabulary concept to get uh, symbols uh, this will guarantee that every instance of NP for example is exactly the same object and then we don't have to worry about uh, implementing an equals method and a not equals method and a hash method, which we might otherwise need to do. Okay, so that's a little bit more of an advanced concept uh, that we're going to skip over for now. If you're interested in reading up on it, read up on it. That's kind of the rationale behind why we're having a vocabulary here in this particular instance. Okay, now there's one more thing that we could do. Uh, we could actually include this concept of a vocabulary inside the symbol class itself, so that the symbol class itself contains a dictionary as a static class member. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So inside the symbol class, we are going to define a, an object called symbols that is a dictionary. Okay, now notice that we're not saying self.symbols, we're saying symbols inside symbol directly. Okay, uh, all right, and now we can add a static uh, variable or a class variable inside here, sorry, rather a, a, a static method. Okay, and we can define get and get is not going to have a self because this is a static method and it's going to get a key and the body of this is basically going to be 
the same thing that we had over here. Except instead of saying self.symbols, we're going to say symbol.symbols. So we've got the same concept. Uh, symbols here is going to be the dic a dictionary. Same type of thing that we had over here, where it was a dictionary inside the vocabulary. Uh, inside vocabulary, here we were constructing a vocabulary, an instance of the class vocabulary, and then we were associating uh, this member variable with each instance of that class, each object that is of type vocabulary. Here we're just saying I'm putting that directly inside the symbol class and this is an object that's associated with the class rather than an object that's associated with instances of the class. Okay, So now let's go ahead and change uh, where before we were referencing vocab, now we'll reference uh, symbol.get. Okay, so here, let's get rid of this. Where we have vocab.get symbol. I'm going to replace that with symbol.get. And we will get rid of this vocabulary. And run this again, and still works. Okay, so now internally, uh, when we look at this rule and this rule, the symbol that represents s here is exactly the same object in memory as this one. There's not two copies. There's not one s symbol and a separate s symbol. They're actually the same s symbol. Likewise, with this determiner, is the same determiner symbol here, and here and here, and here. Okay, and that's it for this.